Let's learn some rust belt mechanic tricks, shall we? I bet the moron didn't make sure it would fit on the lift. No, no. See, there's this thing called a tape measure in driving skills. I understand you millennials just don't have those, but for those of us that are elder millennials, we still have that. I bet it failed because of no third brake light. This one just really makes no sense. There's a giant 48 inch wide $100 light on the back of the cab that you can clearly see in all the pictures and in all the videos and we've lit it up multiple times. I'm sorry, about one in five Facebook comments. You, you guys have got to like look at the picture. I'm sorry. Anyways, let's get jacked up the rest of the way and find out why we actually did fail, because I'm stupid. I, I, I'm, yeah, I'm dumb. Yep, knowing how to use a tape measure really is a very important thing. Yeah, within a quarter of an inch, all set. One of the crummy parts about being a YouTuber is every sponsor will say they're going to send you something and only about one in four actually do. Case in point, this pipe coming down through for the exhaust. I had a sponsor that said they were going to send me one. It never happened. I forgot about it and therefore this was never welded. And that right there has a giant gap I can fit my pinky into almost. There we go. One very ugly, we're not gonna talk about it, weld. And these are my exhaust welding goggles. It's just an old Harbor Freight lens glued onto some regular safety goggles. When you can't fit the helmet, that works to get the job done. Oh, I've seen other YouTubers talk about this. How they find bolts welded to exhausts from northern cars and stuff like that. It's because we just plain weld the ground on and call it good. We don't monkey around with anything else. It's just not worth our time. Yeah, this one's the one that really failed me. Let's see if we can show this on video. I deserve to fail that inspection. Let's learn some rust belt mechanic tricks, shall we? Cotter pins in the rust belt will always be stuck. So what every rust belt mechanic has is a drill bit set that they don't care about. And we just drill sideways into the cotter pin, we snap them off, and then we try to get the nut off. We do not try very long to get this nut off. If this nut does not come off immediately, you grab a reciprocating saw with a halfway decent metal cutting blade. You slice down one side, you slice down the other side, you twack it with a cold chisel, and you pop that sucker out of there. Sorry for the shaky camera. It's currently 40 something degrees out. I think 41 last I checked, but as you can see, Took a reciprocating saw to it. Between the heat of the saw cutting and taking away that piece, now it's able to come off of here. Wide cold chisel is your best friend here. So if you go around the edge of this, back and forth, back and forth, nice and easy, impacting a 90 degree with the cold chisel, it'll come right out. Now my ball joint press is not the latest and greatest. It's an old-fashioned OEM toolkit that I bought like 15 years ago. But let me show you what the difference is between spending $40 more or getting the cheapest one possible. All of these have a little bit of a lip on them. See it right there? So that they self-center when you go to hook it up. And this has a giant hole right through it that fits all the way down through. And the cheaper ones do not have that big hole in them. And so you have to reorganize like 20 times to get things out. I will never stop saying good things about these thousand pound electric impacts from Harbor Freight, these Bauer ones. Would not do it. Aircat would not do it. 
Suppose a thousand pound Vevor would not do it. Walloped onto it and punched it and had it moving in seconds. These, these are without question my favorite investment of a hundred dollar bill I have ever made. Yep, there's that transmission error again. Poor Ranger's not happy. We need to get that van done so we can get this thing off the road and figure out what's up. Hi, Internet. Let's have the stake it or don't stake it argument in the comments section. A lot of old timers will take where the cotter pin goes, they'll line it up, they'll lift it, and they'll stake the nut so that they have a dial in point to throw it back together with. I find it's usually within about 5 to 10 degrees if I do this trick. Do you dial it in fresh every single time, or do you stake the nut and then dial it from there? Comment down below. I'm just kind of curious. I bet it'll be about 50-50. We all get them for Christmas, that really crummy pair of needle nose pliers that you never use for anything. I save them and I put them in with my welder. Here's why. Grounding cable, center of the needle nose, nut in the end, over the top of the rusted out bolt, and zap it. It works out really good for me, but I will warn you that over time it'll kill the pair of pliers. So don't do it with a pair you like. Use the crummy ones you got in your stocking from Christmas. This is why you want a pilot arc setup is because when you got rusted snot that is just hell to get into, you're dealing with rubber, you're dealing with oil and grease and everything else, a best, uh, best arc like this, a BTC 5000, the third generation, this is totally why you need a unit like this. It is not made for precision little itty bitty cuts. This thing is made to chop out whatever it is you don't want. I mean, look at this. That just gouged itself down into there. So, we gotta get the rest of it out. This sucks, but the six ton C-clamp wouldn't even begin to budget even with a thousand pound Bertha on it. Well, poor old Walmart air hammer is just not what it used to be, but it's good enough for this job. So, we definitely need uh, to redo these next year, but this will be good enough to get us through this winter. There we go. So we torched out the core, so there's the upper lip. We grabbed the six ton C clamp ball joint press and gave it a wallop with Bertha, and it came out. As you can see, there is rust starting to score up through. It just plain had expanded with rust or Whatever, by torching it, it loosened it up, punched right out easy. I run into this with cheaper ball joints all the time. The skirt at the top of them is not the right size for the ball joint press. So what I do is I take a piece of 3 inch pipe. 3 inch pipe is about the same size as your center size on a ball joint press kit. And I take it and I get it on there, see right now it's too loose, and I cut a chunk out of it, and I re-weld it, like so, and now I have a Detroit Axle specific pressing collar, and usually I have a ton of these up on the shelf, and apparently in my last cleaning spree I somehow lost all of them, so now I've got to make every single one of these again, but three inch standard pipe from the hardware store, nothing special. So right now we're gonna put this on here. We're gonna take this and we're gonna put it on here. And then we're gonna put a piece of plate across the bottom of it and we're gonna get this thing pressed in. Bunch of longtime viewers have asked for a side-by-side -side of the van and the Ford Ranger that I've driven for years. Now the big difference isn't exactly the cab. Like if I come over here and we go basically almost nose to nose and we come across the cab is definitely shorter on the van but the bed on the other hand is a giant difference 
Here's the ranger bed and the van bed. Yep, bit of a difference. Bunch of people thought this wasn't going to fit. It does. There we go. It's been three days of waking up to 28 to 30 degrees. Keeping working on it out on the lift. All four ball joints done. Exhaust is done. Everything is all set. I thought it was nice to come down here after getting the inspection and just do a quick walk around video. Right in the exact same spot we started off with the Grey Ranger like five or six years or so ago. Isn't that just pretty? Well guys, we got a lot more to do on it, but we need to take a break and get ready for winter, so we'll be back.